Uh, good morning, and first, Mr. President, this time around, and then next time around, Mr. Ex-President, the former President, my dear colleague from Czech Republic, esteemed guests, friends. Well, I'm not quite as shy as Sven was when he said he might be biased when he said it was the best conference of a kind in the world. Uh, it is, and let me welcome you to that best conference in cyber. And um, Cyber Center of Excellence in Tallinn, of course, has yet managed to arrange an impressive program and even more impressive list of speakers. Uh, of course, when we speak about cyber, we speak uh, on a daily basis about this stuff in various different contexts, from stealing money from banks and hijacking vehicles to virtual reality and developing artificial intelligence. While cyber and ICT is giving way to new threats and I think exposes some serious vulnerabilities, it also enables us to achieve innovation and, and progress. It is an integral part of our modern day defense systems. We all acknowledge that cyber defense is also gaining more prominence in NATO and NATO's context. And I anticipate that we will declare cyber a different or separate domain at the upcoming NATO summit in Warsaw, already in five, six weeks' time. Indeed, if we look at our recent past, we haven't seen any conventional conflicts without an element of cyber uh, being, uh, being involved. But declarations themselves are mere words on a paper. What we will do with these words, how we will develop credible cyber policies and actions, both within NATO, but also amongst like-minded countries, um, is, I think, not only a challenge, but also a solution to many of our problems, and it will all shape our collective defense for the future. As there are more and more conflicts surrounding us, we need to prepare ourselves and be prepared on all fronts, um, many of which will go, of course, far beyond hard defense and, and military. But now, let me welcome my good colleague, His Excellency Mr. Martin Stropnitsky, uh, Minister of Defense of the Czech Republic, to the stage. Uh, in my notes here, it says Mr. Stropnitsky has had an impressive career in diplomacy as an ambassador to Portugal, Italy, and to the Holy See. But also I know he has had a distinguished career as, a, as an actor. Um, he holds his current position uh, as a Minister of Defense for the last two and a half years. I'm looking forward to our discussions this afternoon. And also I'm looking forward to an excellent Warsaw Summit. We have a lot at stake there. But now, Mr. Minister, dear colleague, please. The floor is yours. Thank you. The best actors are in politics. Mr. President, dear colleague, uh, excellencies, generals, distinguished guests, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the Cyber Defense Center of Excellence for organizing this important event and for giving me the opportunity to speak here. This conference is one of the biggest events of its kind globally and it represents a unique platform where decision makers as well as experts from military, industry and academia can meet to discuss modern, legal, technical and strategic trends in cyber. It's my pleasure and honor to be able to open this conference this year along with Mr. President and Admiral Nielsen, as far as I know. Thank you. I also appreciate this year's theme of cyber power, as I consider it to be highly topical. The concept of power will play an ever more important role in cyberspace. 
and it is high time to pay proper attention to it. As a matter of fact, cyber attacks are no more limited to cyberspace, but are moving their power projection to the physical world as well. Not only that cyber attacks are often part of conventional warfare, but cyberspace is also becoming a source of various kinds of attacks against society's integrity, be it just a simple dissemination of disinformation or an integral part of a coherent hybrid campaign. Therefore, cyberspace is developing into a potentially dangerous tool which adversaries can misuse to blur the fragile border between peace and war in order to gain strategic advantage over their victim. Recent events in Ukraine illustrate that uh, this is a fact. Last December, two power distribution companies in the country were hacked and electricity to more than 80,000 people cut. A year before, one day before Ukrainian parliamentary elections, hackers accessed electronic billboards in Kiev. Using them, they displayed images of what they falsely portrayed as a civilian massacre carried out by Ukrainian forces. In fact, it was an old picture from the Chechnya war, unrelated to the current events in Ukraine. The two incidents originating in cyberspace might seem mutually unrelated. However, it is more likely that they were part of a long-term effort to undermine Ukrainian society's moral and unity. These events are not limited only to Ukraine, of course. Cyberfactor starts to play a crucial role in hybrid campaigns where conventional instruments meet non-conventional ones and create a dangerous asymmetric environment for confrontation. Spreading disinformation with the aim to subvert the population's trust in the political system and undermine societal cohesion is a powerful weapon. We should face this seriously. Related strategic communication needs to be properly developed and supported by various state institutions and bodies including those that have not been traditionally part of security and defense efforts. One example is the need for a deeper involvement of relevant industry sectors in facing hybrid threats. Enhancing resilience against cyber threats and by extension hybrid threats is becoming a priority for governments across the transatlantic area. The Czech Republic is no exception. Our political will to defend ourselves against cyber threats is anchored both in our national legislation, such as the Act on Cybersecurity, and in our strategic documents, such as the National Cyber Security Strategy. This document expresses the ambition of the Czech Republic to become one of the leading nations in cybersecurity in Europe. And we do work hard to fulfill our aspirations. In uh, 2012, our National Cyber Security Center was established with the aim to provide immediate response to cyber incidents. When it comes uh, specifically to cyber defense, the Ministry of Defense is the main national authority. Within the ministry, the National Cyber Forces Center, a cyber defense unit, is currently being set up. The center will perform a wide range of operations in cyberspace including supporting international operations of the Czech Armed Forces and, if needed, defending the Czech Republic in cyber domain in case of a hybrid conflict. It is also worth mentioning that the Czech Republic was the very first ally that signed the second generation of the Memorandum of Understanding on Cyber Defense Cooperation with NATO in October last year. As you know, the MOU aims to improve cyber defense cooperation between NATO and national cyber defense authorities and follows the enhanced NATO policy on cyber defense adopted in 2014. 
At the same time, however, we know that in practice, we are still only at the beginning. And we must do much more to be able to defend ourselves in cooperation with our NATO allies in the cyberspace. Recently, we have launched a comprehensive national security audit to assess the readiness of our national security system to respond to the wide range of current threats. Among the areas it seeks to examine are, of course, hybrid threats, including threats in cyberspace. The goal is to determine whether our national legislation and the capacities we have are appropriate. And most importantly, the audit should provide us with recommendations on how resilience of our country could be strengthened in a comprehensive way. We are, of course, well aware of the fact that we need to keep in mind the borderless nature of cyberspace and look beyond our borders. It is no coincidence that this conference takes place here in Estonia and that uh, the Center of Excellence was established properly in Tallinn. Estonia has often been at the forefront of cyber attacks, but we should be prepared for more and more allies being targeted in the cyberspace and probably with increasing intensity and frequency. We should learn from each other, increase our capabilities and cooperate very closely. In this context, I would suggest that the frontline allies that are most often targets of cyber attacks coming from beyond the eastern border of NATO create a protective chain within which they would closely cooperate, exchange information and jointly develop cyber defense capacities. These countries which have network probes installed in their systems could join their efforts and connect their outputs in the real time. In this way, they would raise situational awareness and put early warning mechanisms in place, not only within their own borders, but also within the alliance at large. The Warsaw Summit is upon us, and we, the alliance of uh, 28 members, together with our partners, now face crucial decisions, also in the area of cybersecurity and defense. Should the cyberspace be recognized as the fifth operational domain, and I honestly hope it will be, we will have to take the appropriate practical steps in this regard so that the declaration does not end up being an empty statement. In other words, we as the Alliance will need to develop appropriate defense capabilities to be used to defend us in the cyber domain. And let me give you at, last, at least two examples. First, recognizing cyberspace at the, um, as the operational domain will bring the need not only to increase budgets for developing cybersecurity and defense capabilities, but also to increase the number of experienced cyber specialists. We have to prepare for this need and start recruiting and educating them immediately. Second. NATO members should support building active cyber defense capacities within their structures. Article 3 of the Washington Treaty clearly states that the parties separately and jointly by means of continuous and effective self-help and mutual aid will maintain and develop their individual and collective capacity to resist armed attack. And this obligation will now become applicable to the cyber domain as well. Let's stand by our old commitments and have enough courage to commit ourselves to, do, to the new ones related to the rapidly evolving security environment. Developing active cyber defense is among them. NATO, in return, needs to support every positive effort being pursued in the regard by allied nations and partner countries. As always, the alliance is only as strong as is its weakest link. With that, I would like to wish you a productive uh, conference and enjoyable debates with your fellow cyber colleagues. Thank you very much for your kind attention.
Minister. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. May uh, you add some basil into your life in a couple of months' time. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. I hope I will be minister even after October. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much.